thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> uh, just uh, if, if I've got 10 minutes, then I must uh, convey the most important information, which is that Pakistan are now 220 for nine with four overs remaining. Uh, <coughs> But I will match over or they are continuing with 221. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, looking like a, a one-way bet at the moment on India. Um, I, I'm going to talk very briefly and again to pick up on uh, the, our chairman's uh, comments at the start, the overview uh, of the LNG uh, industry uh, and talk about uh, some market trends and price transparency. Uh, he talked a lot about how the uh, Atlantic Basin and the uh, United States and uh, the Asia Pacific markets were somewhat disconnected that the prices were uh, out of balance uh, and that we needed to have uh, a more homogeneous global market uh, I'm going to talk about that uh, in the context of uh, through, through the lens of price transparency um, so this is a quick overview of, of the, the content of the, of the presentation for those of you unfamiliar with Argus, uh, just briefly, uh, we are the world's uh, largest independently held energy price reporting agency. We cover not only uh, natural gas, LNG, but also uh, crude oil, refined products, coal, uh, and a host of other commodities. And we've been in business uh, since uh, 1970. Uh, as you can probably guess, I, I'm from Britain, but uh, I'm based in Singapore. We are a truly sort of global company uh, as well, and we've been uh, reporting on LNG markets for uh, 10 years. Any assessment of the LNG market, you have to start looking at the at supply, and uh, the story of the past few years and the story of the next few years is, is uh, going to be a big increase in the supply of liquefied natural gas available to consumers in the global market. Um, that's been driven. Uh, recently and is going to be driven this year mainly by additions uh, to production from Australia. Uh, I've listed a few of the uh, projects here. Uh, but as you look down the list, you can see uh, the first quarter of next year, 2016, uh, we have the first uh, US export terminal coming on stream at the Sabine Pass in Louisiana. Uh, and that's going to be followed um, all things being equal by in 2017 by uh, up to three, uh, potentially more, but we think realistically uh, probably another three export terminals uh, from the United States. This uh, current supply glut and uh, future supply glut has been playing out in the market. Um, the Argus Northeast Asia Index for uh, LNG prices, um, you can see here from this chart has been uh, cheaper than uh, the uh, relative value of crude uh, expressed in uh, dollars per million barrel BTU uh, and it's all been driven uh, by uh, Papua New Guinea starting ahead of schedule, uh, supply tenders coming out from others uh, from uh, Northwest Shelf and uh, 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 supplies in uh, uh, Malaysia and Indonesia uh, and uh, there was a slight rally at the end of last year uh, ahead of the Northern Hemisphere winter where traders were buying some cargoes, but the decline has continued. On the flip side of the extra supply, obviously, demand has is, is been, been very weak. Um, last, last winter was relatively mild, high storage, uh, and uh, therefore uh, there's been less need for the uh, buyers to restock uh, at, uh, in uh, this winter. Uh, we've also seen uh, several cargoes uh, in, in floating storage, uh, and this is not really, this is obviously not consumption, this is uh, a supply that has been deferred and really st it still hangs over the market. Um, we've also seen in the, in the latter half of last year uh, some of the Atlantic uh, suppliers op opting to regasify LNG volumes to sell into the European hubs rather than to reload from uh, import terminals uh, because there's been no firm demand from Asian customers or from uh, Latin America. In fact, uh, South America has been 
having sort of erupted on the market as, uh, as a new uh, consuming center in 2012-2013 uh, has, has faded away, certainly in comparison with uh, 2013. And if you look forward, the price signals that we're picking up, the, the Argus Northeast Asia Index, uh, is still below uh, the equivalent uh, oil price, oil index uh, price uh, for the bulk of this year. Uh, so what this means is that it's still very much worthwhile buying spot rather than term LNG. Just a few words about uh, India. We, we also assess the price of LNG delivered into uh, the Indian import terminals, uh, and we have seen the spread between the price in India and the price in Northeast Asia diminish over the course of uh, last year. It's become quite narrow. This is more an, uh, a reflection of the Northeast Asian prices falling more sharply. Uh, in India's case, uh, the NBP price, which is the price for UK natural gas in, within the UK pipeline system, uh, this provides an alternative outlet for Atlantic Basin gas. It's an extremely liquid market, uh, and uh, what this, this is really the alternative uh, outlet for for uh, India, so for, or for the Atlantic supply, I should say. So uh, LNG is never going to be delivered into India at a price uh, below that of the UK NBP. So continuing the, the forward-looking Comments. Um, we're seeing, as I say, uh, uh, the, this year, or the, sorry, two, 2014, we've seen Papua New Guinea and Australia dominate uh, the spot supply. Um, we're seeing uh, uh, strong uh, reloads. This is uh, cargoes that have been delivered into an import terminal are then regasified and re exported, uh, particularly out of Spain. The Spanish economy has been um, very uh, hard hit uh, because of the uh, European uh, economic crisis uh, and uh, therefore energy demand there is not as much as it has been. Um, so Spain obviously figuring large in terms of re-exports of LNG. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, spot purchases, uh, it's worth noting that uh, Japan obviously and Argentina sort of see there uh, uh, last year very uh, prominent buyers of spot cargoes up to, uh, almost 60 spot cargoes purchased by Japanese buyers last year uh, half of those came from Papua New Guinea <coughs> um, one other thing I'd like to hi highlight on this chart is uh, the very low level of imports spot imports into China and uh, Korea um, we in fact saw 16 reloaded cargoes uh, from the Atlantic Basin going to um, Korea, uh, but they were mainly to fulfill uh, term commitments or optimization of contracts. There's not, not actual spot. spot. Um, and uh, at our, uh, Argus data is really showing for last year uh, that uh, demand was well below supply. Uh, particularly Korea and China, which was the previous slide, um, whereas in 2013 <coughs> the market had been extremely tight. In terms of spot trade volumes uh, last year, they were pretty static compared to uh, the year before. Uh, we saw increased reloads, uh, but uh, uh, I've already covered that. The Reloads, uh, the re reason I do mention reloads is because they are very important for spot market liquidity. Uh, the primary producers, once they've set up a, a gasification terminal, they want to recoup the investment and they tend to do that by signing up long-term contracts uh, to ship <coughs> over uh, periods as long as 20 years, but uh, sometimes less. So reloads are uh, critical to providing liquidity to the spot market, providing flexibility. 
Uh, these were the markets uh, in 2013, as I, I intimated before. Uh, Latin America was a very big feature uh, of that. Uh, almost two-thirds of the uh, reload uh, cargoes went to South America in 2013. But if you look at last year, <coughs> that shrank down to a third, uh, and uh, Asia became the preferred uh, destination. Putting all this together, um, particularly the outlook for increased supply this year and next year, um, we see that uh, spot and short-term trade will continue to grow. <coughs> um, we can see, uh, for based on IEA figures, that uh, flexible energy with no firm contract is, is likely to reach about 42 million tons a year uh, by 2018. Uh, and there are very there are other large contracts. I've mentioned Australia, United States, but there are other large plants like uh, projects like the Angola, which uh, at the moment remain uncontracted. Uh, and uh, the importance of the U.S. cannot be overstated because uh, the U.S. is going to be selling LNG on an FOB basis without uh, destination restrictions. <coughs> this will also encourage more trade, more flexibility, and more. Uh, price transparency. Should we mention, uh, obviously, uh, weaker oil prices, which is uh, ev everyone is very much aware of. Um, this may decrease spot demand for gas. <coughs> Liquid fuels becoming more attractive. Uh, and uh, uh, so far, what we've been seeing from the gas buyers is that uh, while they are looking at uh, uh, oil products as an alternative uh, in they're d doing so they're still very interested in opportunistic purchases of, of gas on the spot market uh, to pick up on uh, Mr. Tripati's uh, comments about uh, the price differences between the different gas basins in uh, 2013, we saw a lot of arbitrage possibilities, opportunities from the Atlantic Basin to Northeast Asia. There's a price difference of almost $3 per million BTU, <coughs> uh, practically $2 uh, there, uh, sorry, uh, uh, just over a, a dollar, dollar, dollar twenty-five uh, between the Atlantic Basin and India. Uh, but that tightened, those, those arbitrage, those spreads tightened last year. Um, to maybe uh, 70 cents uh, per million BTU in the case of Atlantic Basin versus India, um, and uh, maybe a dollar and a half, uh, a bit more, to Northeast Asia. Um, <coughs> we think that the um, arbitrage opportunity is going to shrink some more uh, this year because of the emerging supply in the Pacific, Australia, uh, as uh, mentioned. Uh, Atlantic cargoes are going to be less competitive in uh, Asia, so you can see from this chart, again, the, the spreads are uh, narrowing quite sharply. <coughs> but that may change in 2016. That could be just a phenomenon for the next 12 months, uh, because uh, as the American supply comes in, that's going to be delivered initially into the Atlantic Basin, uh, so that will depress prices there. So we could see um, uh, a re-emergence of the arbitrage between the Atlantic Basin and the Pacific Basin and, and to India. Uh, the Angola uh, project as well, I should mention in that context. As I hinted before, the uh, MBP, the UK's uh, hub price, uh, is really the, the main driver of the Atlantic LNG price. Uh, suppliers always have an option to regasify LNG and sell that <coughs> NBP, uh, which is, is particularly an attractive market in the Northern Hemisphere winter. Uh, and uh, in this last uh, winter period, we've seen the UK, in fact, take uh, significantly more cargoes from uh, Trinidad, just to illustrate that. should mention, um, as the US supply comes on stream, it's going to be indexed to uh, Henry Hub, which is a a gas, uh, gas hub, physical gas hub in Louisiana. Um, with the fall in oil prices, uh, Henry Hub pricing is becoming less attractive. Um, uh, 
to, to the buyers in Asia. Uh, and uh, you can see uh, this chart which compares the uh, oil linked uh, price in uh, red in Japan, uh, the US Gulf Coast FOB and the LNG price delivered ex ship into uh, Japan, that's in green. Uh, that's a sort of forward, uh, forward curve. Uh, and you can see that the, uh, the uh, uh, attraction of uh, Henry Hub uh, as a, a cheap source of gas is, is going to fade. But I think um, Henry Hub is important as uh, a way of transitioning from away from an oil index. For the Jap Japanese buyers in particular are very conservative and uh, the idea of moving away from the oil index which they have been working with for many, very many years is, is a hard one for them to uh, accept. So uh, shifting to a Henry Hub basis for, for contracts is a, is a sort of transitional step. <coughs> I'm not sure how I'm doing for time, but I just have a, a quick uh, plug for the Argus uh, LNG daily report, which uh, is, uh, provides uh, daily updates on all developments in the LNG market globally, um, and has had some plaudits from customers. Uh, and then I will s summarize by saying that uh, obviously LNG spot prices have lost a lot of value since, since last winter, since 2013-2014. Uh, <coughs> We're seeing that the spot market is being driven by the fundamentals of gas, supply and demand, not just oil indexation. Uh, it's quite clear from the wave of fresh supply coming in that uh, spot and short-term trade is going to continue. To grow. Uh, Australia is driving that at the moment, but the US is going to be uh, the key driver in uh, the 12 months after that, 2016 onward. And really my key message is that liquidity in a spot market is going to be key to enabling a move away from oil indexation. I think it makes economic sense for the price of a commodity to be determined by supply and demand fundamentals of the commodity itself rather than uh, a proxy like, uh, like uh, crude oil. Um, we should see more disconnect between Atlantic and Pacific basins uh, in the coming year, but uh, uh, that may not last. Uh, and uh, uh, finally, uh, I think uh, just to reiterate, uh, the, a move to LNG spot indexation in long-term contract pricing is probably a, a, a good goal to aim for because that should ensure a competitive and efficient marketplace. Uh, I'm not sure how it did for time, but uh, thank you very much for your attention.